Daniel Torotik Arap Moe Moha is a former Kenyan politician who served as the second president of Kenya from 1978 to 2002. He removed Kikuyu ministers and replaced them with ministers from his own Kalenjin tribe. He was forced to allow multi-party elections in 1992. Prior to 1978, he served as the third vice president of Kenya from 1967 to 1978. Moy is popularly known to Kenyans as Nyo, a Swahili word for footsteps, as he often said he was following in the footsteps of the first president. He also earned the sobriquet Professor of Politics due to his long rule of 24 years. Early life and entry into politics, Moy was born in Kiriangwo village, Sako Division, Baringo County, and was raised by his mother Kai Moy Chebub following the early death of his father. He is of the Kalenjin people. After completing his secondary education at Kapsabet High School, he attended Tamj Teachers Training College in the Kiryo District. He worked as a teacher from 1946 until 1955. In 1955 Moy entered politics when he was elected member of the Legislative Council for Rift Valley. In 1960 he founded the Kenyu African Democratic Union with Ronald Ngala to challenge the Kenyu African National Union led by Jomo Kenyatta. KADU pressed for a federal constitution, while KANU was in favor of centralism. The advantage lay with the numerically stronger KANU, and the British government was finally forced to remove all provisions of a federal nature from the constitution. In 1957 Moy was re-elected member of the Legislative Council for Rift Valley. He became Minister of Education in the pre-independence government of 1960 Euro 1961. Vice Presidency, after Kenya gained independence on December 12, 1963, Kenyatta convinced Moy that KADU and KANU should be merged to complete the process of decolonization. Accordingly, KADU dissolved and joined KANU in 1964. The only real challenge to KANU's dominance came from the Kenya People's Union, starting in 1966. That party was banned in 1969 and from that point onward Kenya was a de facto single-party state dominated by the Car Copyright Car Copyright Ya Copyright Leno Alliance. However, with an eye on the fertile lands of the Rift Valley populated by members of Moy's Kalenjin tribe, Kenyatta secured their support by first promoting Moy to Minister for Home Affairs in 1964, and then to Vice President in 1967. As a member of a minority tribe Moy was also an acceptable compromise for the major tribes. Moy was elected to the Kenyan parliament in 1963 from Baringa North. Since 1966 until his retirement in 2002 he served as the Baringo Central MP and only served as a vice president until 1978 when he became the president. However, Moy faced opposition from the Kikuyu elite known as the Kiyombu Mafia who would have preferred one of their own to be eligible for the presidency. This resulted in an attempt by the Constitutional Drafting Group to change the constitution to prevent the vice president automatically assuming power in the event of the president's death. The presence of this succession mechanism might have led to dangerous political instability if Kenyatta died, given his advanced age and perennial illnesses. However, Kenyatta withstood the political pressure and safeguarded Moy's position. Presidency. When Jomo Kenyatta died on August 22, 1978, Moy succeeded him. He was popular, with widespread support all over the country. He toured the country and came into contact with the people everywhere, which was in great contrast to Kenyatta's imperial style of governing behind closed doors. However, political realities dictated that he would continue to be beholden to the Kenyatta system which he had inherited intact including the nearly dictatorial powers vested in the presidency. Despite his popularity, Moy was still too weak to consolidate his power. From the beginning, anti-communism was an important theme of Moy's government. Speaking on the new president's behalf, Vice President Mwai Kaibaki bluntly stated, There is no room for communists in Kenya. On August 1, 1982, lower-level Air Force personnel, led by senior private grade Ihazekia Akuka and backed by university students, attempted a coup d'etat copyright tat oust Moy. The putsch was quickly suppressed by military and police forces commanded by Chief of General Staff Mayim al-Muhammad. 
To this day it appears that the attempt by two independent groups to seize power contributed to the failure of both, with one group making its attempt slightly earlier than the other. Moy took the opportunity to dismiss political opponents and consolidate his power. He reduced the influence of Kenyatta's men in the cabinet through a long-running judicial inquiry that resulted in the identification of key Kenyatta men as traitors. Moy pardoned them but not before establishing their traitor status in the public view. The main conspirators in the coup, including Akuka were sentenced to death, marking the last judicial executions in Kenya. He appointed supporters to key roles and changed the constitution to establish a de jure single-party state. However, the country had effectively been a one-party state since 1969. The amendments effectively gave Moy complete political control over the country. Kenya's academics and other intelligentsia did not accept this and the universities and colleges became the origin of movements that sought to introduce democratic reforms. However, Kenyan secret police infiltrated these groups and many members moved into exile. Marxism could no longer be taught at Kenyan universities. Underground movements, for example Mwikinya and Pambana, were born. Moy's regime now faced the end of the Cold War, and an economy stagnating under rising oil prices and falling prices for agricultural commodities. At the same time the West no longer dealt with Kenya as it had in the past, when it was viewed as a strategic regional outpost against communist influences from Ethiopia and Tanzania. At that time Kenya had received much foreign aid, and the country was accepted as well governed with Moy as a legitimate leader and firmly in charge. Western allies deliberately overlooked the increasing degree of political repression, including the use of torture at the infamous Nio House torture chambers. Some of the evidence of these torture cells was eventually to be exposed in 2003 after Mwai Kaibaki became president. However, a new thinking emerged among Western policymakers after the end of the Cold War, and as Moy increasingly was viewed as a despot, Foreign aid was withheld pending compliance with economic and political reforms. One of the key conditions imposed on his regime, especially by the United States through fiery Ambassador Smith Hempstone, was the restoration of a multi-party system. Moy managed to accomplish this against fierce opposition, single-handedly convincing the delegates at the KANU conference at Kajarani in December 1991. Moy won elections in 1992 and 1997, which were marred by political violence on both sides. Moy skillfully exploited Kenya's mix of ethnic tensions in these contests, especially smaller tribes' ever-present fear of domination by the larger tribes. In the absence of an effective and organized opposition, Moy had no difficulty in winning. Although it is also suspected that electoral fraud may have occurred. The key to his victory in both elections was a divided opposition. Criticism and Corruption Allegations In 1999 the findings of NGOs like Amnesty International and a special investigation by the United Nations were published which indicated that human rights abuses were prevalent in Kenya under the Moy regime. Reporting on Corruption and Human Rights Abuses by British reporter Mary Ann Fitzgerald from 1987 a Euro 88 resulted in her being vilified by the government and finally deported. Moy was implicated in the 1990s Goldenberg scandal and subsequent cover-ups, where the Kenyan government subsidized exports of gold far in excess of the foreign currency earnings of exporters. In this case, the gold was smuggled from Congo, as Kenya has negligible gold reserves. The Goldenberg scandal cost Kenya the equivalent of more than 10% of the country's annual GDP. Half-hearted inquiries that began at the request of foreign aid donors never amounted to anything substantial during Moy's presidency. Although it appears that the peaceful transfer of power to Mwai Kaibaki may have involved an understanding that Moy would not stand trial for offenses committed during his presidency, Foreign aid donors reiterated their requests and Kaibaki reopened the inquiry. As the inquiry has progressed, Moy, his two sons, Philip and Gideon, and his daughter June, as well as a host of high ranking Kenyans, have been implicated. In testimony delivered in late July 2003, Treasury Permanent Secretary Joseph Magari recounted that in 1991, Moy ordered him to pay KSH 34.5 million to Goldenberg contrary to the laws then in force. 
In October 2006, Moy was found by the International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes to have taken a bribe from a Pakistani businessman to award a monopoly of duty free shops at the country's international airports in Mombasa and Nairobi. The businessman, Ali Nasir, claimed to have paid Moy $2 million US dollars in cash to obtain government approval for the World Duty Free Limited investment in Kenya. On August 31, 2007, WikiLeaks published a secret report that laid bare a web of shell companies, secret trusts and frontmen that his entourage had used to funnel hundreds of millions of pounds into nearly 30 countries. Retirement, Moy was constitutionally barred from running in the 2002 presidential elections. Some of his supporters floated the idea of amending the constitution to allow him to run for a third term, but Moy preferred to retire, choosing Uhuru Kenyatta the son of Kenya's first president, as his successor. Mwai Kaibaki was elected president by a two-to-one majority over Kenyatta, which was confirmed on December 29, 2002. Kaibaki was then wheelchair-bound, having narrowly escaped death in a road traffic accident on the campaign trail. Moy handed over power in a poorly organized ceremony that had one of the largest crowds ever seen in Nairobi in attendance. The crowd was openly hostile to Moy. After leaving office in December 2002, Moy lived in retirement, largely shunned by the political establishment. However, he still retained some popularity with the masses, and his presence never failed to gather a crowd. He spoke out against a proposal for a new constitution in 2005. According to Moy, the document was contrary to the aspirations of the Kenyan people. After the proposal was defeated in a November 2005 constitutional referendum, President Kaibaki called President Moy to arrange for a meeting to discuss the way forward. On July 25, 2007, Kaibaki appointed Moy as special peace envoy to Sudan, referring to Moy's vast experience and knowledge of African affairs, and his stature as an elder statesman. In his capacity as peace envoy, Moy's primary task was to help secure peace in southern Sudan where an agreement, signed in early 2005, was being implemented. At the time, the Kenyan press speculated that Moy and Kaibaki were planning an alliance ahead of the December 2007 election. On August 28, 2007, Moy announced his support for Kaibaki's re-election and said that he would campaign for Kaibaki. He sharply criticized the two opposition Orange Democratic Movement factions, arguing that they were tribal in nature. Moy owns the Kiptagaich Tea Factory, established in 1979, which has been involved in controversy. In 2009 the factory was under threat of being closed down by the government during the Mao forest evictions. Personal life, Daniel Arup Moy married Lena Moy in 1950, but they separated in 1974, before his presidency. Lena died in 2004. Daniel Arup Moy has eight children, five sons and three daughters. Among the children are Gideon Moy, Jonathan Toroitik and Philip Moy. His older and only brother William T. Whitoke died in 1995. He is a member of the Africa Inland Mission Church. Legacy. Equals eponyms equals, Moy Air Base, Nairobi, Moy International Airport, Mombasa, Moy International Sports Center, Kajarani, Nairobi, Moy Stadium, Kisumu, Moy University, Mudorat. Roads and Streets, Moy Avenue, Moy Avenue. See also Politics of Kenya. References External links Moy Africa Institute, The Looting of Kenya under President Moy, Video, Presentation to the National Summit on Africa, Washington, D.C. A Euro February 2000.